What is happening guys? Ari here with Boston Automotive Consulting and as always this video is brought to you by SaveOnMyAuto.com where you can go on and start shopping for a brand new car and start collecting dealer pricing from multiple dealers and if you haven't already please consider subscribing because this channel is going to give you all the negotiation tips that you're going to need so that you can land yourself the very best deal on your next new brand new car purchase. So what I wanted to explain in this video today was my experience using Lease Trader and my recommendations going forward. If you haven't watched one of my videos yet of how I got out of my previous lease and into my M4, click up top onto this video so you can get a sense for how I actually handled getting out of my previous lease and what I wish I did, sort of why I'm making this video today. So I got into my previous X5 and within a couple months, I really didn't like the thing. I actually listed it on Lease Trader literally two months after I got the thing. What I did was, and what I want to encourage you to do is if you're thinking about posting to either Lease Trader or Swap a Lease, what you want to do is invest in a decent camera. Or maybe if you're thinking about getting the, the new iPhone 11 Pro, pull the trigger because this is what's actually going to help you get out of your lease more than anything. It's sort of like the thumbnail that you choose to click every time you go onto YouTube. Makes a big, big impression on anybody that's looking at your car. Go around the car, take as many good pictures as you can of the car and then decide to yourself which service are you going to choose. Are you going to choose Lease Trader or are you going to choose Swap a Lease? So full disclosure, I've never posted my car on Swap a Lease. I posted it onto Lease Trader and I've heard marvelous things about both these companies. However, it seems as though the majority of whoever I'm talking to posts onto Swap a Lease. There's links to both of these companies in the description where you can click and create your profile and choose the plan that you want to list your vehicle through, how much exposure you're going to want put on your car. But more than just that, more than just the posting and the pictures, how good your description is, there's a few different factors that play into how and if you're going to succeed in transferring your lease to somebody else. What you've got to understand is, is that a lot of the advertisements for, for people that are posting up their cars trying to get out of them, they post sometimes a really low lease payment. And how that's supported is, is it started off as a really high lease payment. And what they're doing is, is offering a cash incentive to you to work into the lease payment to lower it. In, in, a set, in essence, what they're doing is they're lowering the lease payment for you by offering you a cash incentive to get out of their lease. As in, if my payment is 700 and I want you to see it as a lower payment, I'm gonna offer you a $3,000 incentive so that the payment in essence becomes 600. You can do this too if you have a really high payment and you know you got, let's say, 24 months left on the lease, you got a decent amount of mileage left and you're trying to offer it to somebody else, what I wanna encourage you to do is, same thing I did, I offered like a $4,000 incentive to get out because it was far less than my actual liability to BMW. That $4,000 gets divided by 24 and gets subtracted from a really high lease payment, making it to a really, really aggressive lease payment. So the complications in all this is, is that sometimes you're going to be faced with out-of-state buyers, you know, they may want to see the car, they may want to have the car run through a pre-purchase inspection. What I want to encourage you to do is, because you're starting early, you should probably take this car to a third party or have it already pre-inspected. Get it done very early and try to do some maintenance, maybe take it back a few months after, get another pre-purchase inspection done, or do it per request. If the buyer is insisting that this car get a pre-purchase inspection, maybe have them show a little bit more proof of commitment, ask them as many questions as you possibly can, hop on the phone with them, do what you need to do, but see if it's worth your time to get a pre-purchase inspection or even contact the lease company to get a lease end pre-inspection where they'll come out for free and tell you what damages are on the car. And because those damages, those liabilities are gonna be passed on to the new owner, you can share that pre 
that pre-lease end inspection with the new owner. Now, aside from dealing with the, the person that's going to be taking over the lease, the lease company itself may have specific rules. And how that's going to work is, is if whether or not the lease company supports transfer. Land Rover Jaguar does not support them. There's a few other companies that don't support them as well, especially independent lease companies. And you can actually find this out by logging on to leasetrader.com and clicking on you know, a comparable vehicle to yours that's listed onto Lease Trader. And you'll be able to see in the tabs below in the description what the bank's requirements are for doing a transfer. You'll be able to see things like such as for Acura, it'll tell you whether or not the transfer is supported, if there's any fees involved. In this case, there's none. However, you can't transfer the lease within the last six months of the lease. Quite frankly, you'd be kind of crazy to do that anyway. Um, similarly, what you want to do is, is use both Lease Trader and Swapolis to gauge how much people are offering comparable vehicles as yours and try to put and position your vehicle less than what they're positioning theirs, even if it means offering a higher incentive. Because you've got a little bit of time, because nobody's really reaching out to you right away, and if they are, congratulations, because you've got a little bit of time, set aside some money so that you can use that money in order to offset the new lessee's lease payment. Now, when you find that person that's gonna be taking over the lease and they're asking you all sorts of questions about its condition, pre-purchase inspection, you now have the obligation of making sure that that person is going to be following through with the process by normal means. Because one of the biggest questions that I kept on getting asked by people on Lease Trader consistently wasting my time in essence was would you be willing to give me this car and keep the car on your credit as in not do a full-blown transfer where they're assuming the credit liability for the lease and that's a big no-no you want to stay far away from that and you're going to be asked that a ton of times what lease trader did and i'm what, what i'm pretty sure swap a lease does as well is they offer a credit application in the initial stages of the buyer's creation of their profile where they'll be checked off. You'll be able to see if a buyer is verified or their credit has been checked to, to basically see if that person can even take over your lease because there's nothing worse than, you know, getting an offer from a buyer, getting all excited, going through the whole, you know, getting the car inspected, doing a lot of communication only to find out that either one, their credit's no good for the transfer or number two, they're going to be wasting your time and trying to figure out if you can just give them the car and they pay you directly and you pay the lease company. That just doesn't make sense. So ultimately your success on either of these two websites, which I've linked below in the description is going to highly depend on how good your pictures are how aggressive of an incentive you're offering to lower the new person's lease payment and whether or not the lease company is making it easy for you to be able to transfer the lease to the other person. So guys, I hope that my sharing of my experience on Lease Trader and my feedback on both companies that I both know and what I've heard helps you in trying to figure out how this all works and whether or not you should do it. I highly encourage you to do it. And if I could, I'd probably suggest trying out swap a lease first because that's something that I wish that I had given a shot because a lot of people seem to be recommending them. They don't get me wrong, Lease Trader, they also recommend. It's just I hear a lot more feedback about Swap a Lease. Links to both of these places in the description below. And if you found this information useful and you wanna see more of these new car buying and negotiation tip type videos, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to visit saveonmyauto.com down in the link in the description below. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.